one more example of what we can do with our products minus reactants rule. You can find the heat of formation for something if you know enough other information around it. So here they say the combustion of a mole of propane produces this many kilojoules per mole. So if we're burning propane, what does that look like? Propane is C3H8 and it's a hydrocarbon, so when it burns it reacts with oxygen and the products will be carbon dioxide and steam. And they're telling us the delta H, and they're asking us to find the heat of formation for propane. So if we were working out the delta H for this, we would do the heats of formation of all the products. Minus the heats of formation of all the reactants. So the products here, oh, let's get, the, sorry, let's get this balanced before we go any further or we will come to grief. Three carbons on this side, we need a three right there. Eight hydrogen on this side, so we need eight on the right, so a four in front of the steam. And that gives us three times two is six oxygens plus four more oxygens there. A total of 10 oxygen on the left, on the right, sorry. So we need 10 oxygen on the left. There we go, there's our balanced reaction, and now I'll get rid of this clutter so it looks nice. So, the point of this question is, if we could just look up all of our products and reactants, we could get the delta H anyway, but they're saying, pretend you don't have the heat of formation for propane. If you look in your book, propane is there, but we're saying for this question, pretend it's not, and see if you can find it based on the other stuff we've given you. So, if we did products minus reactants for this, we would do three times the heat of formation for carbon dioxide, and four times the heat of formation for steam, minus 241.8. For reactants, we'd have propane, which we're told we don't know, so I'm just going to put an X for that. And then we have five times zero because there is no oxygen, or sorry, because oxygen's heat of formation is zero. And they're telling us with this 243.9 that they did this calculation and the answer is this. You see why I put a negative on there? They said this reaction produces that many kilojoules per mole of propane, therefore it must be exothermic, therefore it deserves to have a negative sign. So we've got all this, can we solve for that x? Yeah, probably. We've survived a few math classes in our day, we can probably do this. Let's see what we get here. 3 times minus 393.5 minus 1180.5 4 times 241.8, that's minus 967.2, minus, all that's here is x, equals minus 2043.9. Add these together, uh, minus 1180 plus 967.2, so I get minus 2147.7 minus x equals minus 2043.9. Now we have to do some algebra to this to isolate the x. I'm going to add 2147 to each side. Or if you want, you can think of it as take this negative number over to the right hand side where it becomes positive. That's legit too. And you get 2043.9 negative plus 2147.7. We get that negative x is 103.8.
multiply both sides by negative 1, or multiply both sides by negative 1, doesn't matter, and you get x is minus 103.8 kilojoules. And if we look in the data book now, under propane, minus 103.8, so this worked. Not a real common use of the formula, but it is a legitimate question that we could pop to you, so once you've seen it a couple of times, it's no big deal to set it up. You just put an x for your unknown substance and then use your algebra skills to solve for the x.